Thank you and welcome back to the second segment of the show for today. The topic is the rise and fall of Adolf Hitler and we're fortunate to have with us to uh, talk about uh, the rise and fall of this great German uh, uh, individual, uh, Alana McLaughlin. And, and Alana, uh, let's uh, pick up where we left off the last time because I was thinking in terms of some of the things you said in reference to his background and et cetera, but speak to him uh, in reference to uh, however you wish. In the last segment, I talked about how Adolf Hitler's background had a very vital part in what made him the man that we know today. And so, well, I take that back, the monster that we know today. And so I basically talked about how he grew up in a normal household for that day and time. And he, nothing was really out of the, out of the ordinary up until both his parents passed away by the time he was the age of 19 and he was denied entry into art school. A lesser known fact about Adolf Hitler, he was really into art and he could draw. He could draw faces and buildings from memory, but when it came to drawing full bodies and copying off of something, he wasn't very good at that. And so he did not pass the test to the art school that he applied for and he was denied entry. So then, at that point, both his parents were dead and he was homeless. Mm -hmm. So he was a homeless man for a while. He would live in, shelter, in shelters or on mattresses, wherever he could find, mm -hmm. or in, even in train stations. Then he decided to go back again and try to apply to art school again. He was denied entry once again. And so then again, he... So again, he was homeless, but he did get an inheritance from his sister that was supposed to be left for him when his mother passed. So then he did have a little money on him. So he decided to buy some new clothes and try to freshen up his life. He started attending anti-Semite meetings where he would listen to pe people speak about how Jewish people are going to run Germany into the ground. And so then he started to get up and speak himself. And then he made a reputation of being a great speaker. He could get up and just talk and talk and talk. And a lesser known fact about Adolf Hitler, he had a problem with spitting. He would spit everywhere. But <laughs> um, nevertheless, he talked and he talked and talked. And so after he made this very good reputation of being uh, this great speaker he started the nazi germany movement basically where he created the swastika and he and people started to wear the swastikas as patches on them or on pins and that's what really started the rise of nazi germany he actually himself created the swastika Swast swastika swastika yes or he was the first one to reveal it. No one really knows. But either way, he's credited for the swastika. And so Adolf Hitler, after being known as his great speaker, was arrested and put in a jail where he wrote his autobiography, Mein Kampf. Mein Kampf was so poorly written that a bunch of editors turned it down. And so he asked a couple of guards while he was in jail and a couple other cellmates to help him re rewrite Mein Kampf. And then another fact about Adolf Hitler that a lot of people don't know, when he rose to power in Germany after being released from jail, he made every household in Germany own a copy of Mein Kampf. Every household had to have one. It was law and for birthdays or weddings you were supposed to give Mein Kampf as a gift and so he knew that unless he made people buy the book no one would buy it because it was poorly written it didn't have a lot of um, it didn't have a lot of punctuation and it had a lot of grammatical errors and so after the release of Mein Kampf he be just became known as this, this evil evil man and then he started to take movements against the Jewish people it started with um, things like um, burning down a synagogue and then making them clean it up and then pay for the damages. And then Hitler started to turn on his own guards. And so basically he would turn on the SS and he killed a lot of his guards and then made a whole new foundation of, of guards and future leaders, which really 
help jumpstart the Holocaust. And so with Hitler and his newfound army of these dolls, basically, he started what we know as one of the worst periods in history. He would have, oh, another fact about Hitler, he had training camps for children who wanted to grow up to be guards, like a part of the SS and et cetera. He would have Hitler, like teen camps, he would have some for girls and some for males. And the girls would be taught, you know, how to stay at home and get pregnant and take care of children while their husbands would be taught, you know, how to fight and beat and shoot guns and et cetera. And so Hitler made this well thought out blueprint of how he wanted the world to be run and how he wanted to exterminate the Jewish people. Well, what was his uh, attitude? I mean, why was this attitude toward the Jewish population? I mean, what, what, what uh, created that kind of hatred for, uh, that he had for them? It's actually, that's up for de debate because a lot of people say that um, his hate for the Jews came from the man who denied him entry into art school who just so happened to be Jewish. Or um, it comes from how in the Bible, you know, the Jews killed Christ and he read that and just thought that he was going to take matters into his own hands and exterminate the Jewish people. But that's really a subject that no one knows for sure. And since Adolf Hitler killed himself when the war was over, no one really knows. And he doesn't really discuss it much in Mein Kampf, but he does make it very prominent that he does hate the Jewish people. And not only did he hate the Jewish people, he hated the Slavs, um, anybody who wasn't, you know, the blonde hair, blue eyed type that Aryan he liked. The, the Aryan race. And a thing about the Aryan race, there is no Aryan race. That's always been something that no one really knows. Mm -hmm. Aryan is supposed to be a part of a country or no, a part of a continent that houses these people. It's not necessarily, there's no real Aryan race. As a race, as a racial, ethnic. Yeah, group. there's no ethnic group that's yeah. called Aryan. It's more of kind of just a group of people. But over time, that's become the definition of the people that Adolf Hitler liked. And so basically, Adolf just went off the deep end and he made it his life goal to terrorize anyone who didn't fit his criteria. And that's what he did for a while. Okay, so, and so let's take this uh, second commercial break and then we'll come back and we'll pick up on that last uh, 10 minute segment. And we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short uh, commercial break. 